Okay, so yeah, I'm Katrina Lemishko and I'm a machine learning scientist uh, at Quantum All. And today uh, I'll talk about uh, our machine learning based approach for filling gaps in data on plasma related processes. And uh, we'll be focusing on our machine learning model to predict sputtering yields. So sputtering is the process of removal of atoms from the material from a material surface uh, through ion bombardment. Uh, sputtering is important for processes like etching and thin film deposition, and the efficiency of sputtering can be measured by the sputtering yield. And sputtering yield depends on, uh, so the sputtering yield is defined as the average number of atoms uh, removed from the target material uh, by a single uh, impact uh, from the incident ion. And sputtering yield depends on incident ion energy, the un uh, angle of incidence, and the chemical composition of the target material and the uh, projectile ion. Uh, this graph here shows how sputtering yields depends, typically depends on the energy of the projectile ion. So for energies larger than the sputtering threshold energy uh, with the increment of uh, ion energy, the sputtering yield uh, increases monotonically. Uh, till it reaches its maximum value as by max here, and after that it decreases monotonically. So usually sputtering yields are determined uh, through experiments or molecular dynamic simulations, but both these approaches, they are time consuming and they can be difficult to implement. Uh, so instead, we can use the existing sputtering yield data to train a machine learning model that can predict sputtering yields for uh, target material ion combinations that has never been studied before. Uh, so this task can be effectively implemented using supervised machine learning. So a supervised machine learning model learns relationships between some input data or input features, which are independent variables and known responses to, to this data at the target variable. So the machine learning model can generate reasonable predictions for the response to new input data. Uh, so in uh, our uh, sputtering yield prediction tasks, we decided to predict two variables, the maximum sputtering yield, SY max, and the corresponding uh, incident ion energy, E max, values at normal incidence for the simplicity. So also for the simplicity, our initial goal was to focus only on target materials composed of single elements and bombarded by uh, um, uh, single elemental ions, let's say. So uh, for this task, we collected 267 uh, we collected data, sorry, for 267 unique single element targets ion combinations. And as input descriptors for machine learning models, we decided to use easily accessible data that uh, describes chemical and physical properties of both ions and the target materials. So in, on, in total, and uh, they are summarized here in this table. So for both target material and ion, we used uh, atomic number values, the atomic masses, the melting and boiling points, the uh, energy of evaporation and enthalpy of formation of the target material and the neutral form of ion. We used densities of the targets. Uh, we used first transition potentials for the target compound and the neutral form of the ion species. And additionally, we used uh, atomic covalent and one intervals radia for both target uh, compound and uh, ion. So, uh, yeah, so before uh, using this data set to train our machine learning model, we needed to perform some transformation. Uh, data transformation steps. So we noticed that for both uh, the maximum sputtering yield and uh, the Emax, the uh, distribution of the absolute values, the distributions, they were positively skewed. And they resembled log normal distributions with uh, most of the values uh, centered, like, uh, centered around like near zeros, zero, sorry, they being very small. So for example, in the case of sputtering yield, the uh, absolute values ranged uh, between 0 0.0015 and 56 atoms. And for the energy of incident ion, the uh, values uh, varied between uh, 240 EV and 900,000 EV. So given this, the characteristics of these distributions, we decided to uh, predict uh, common logarithms of both sputtering yield and the incident ion energy instead of the absolute values. And uh, in addition to target variable transformation, we uh, processed input descriptors. So we addressed the 
missing values and input descriptors uh, by imputing them with a simple machine learning model. And in addition to that, we normalized uh, the descriptor values. So we brought them to the same scale and with the mean uh, of zero and standard deviation of one. So our uh, data uh, training. So in the process of machine learning model selection, we uh, evaluated different machine learning algorithms, including conventional algorithms and different neural network architectures. So for this, the data was split in several parts. Uh, so the test set was uh, uh, reserved exclusively for final model evaluation, and it was never used for training. And the remaining data was split into training set and validation set. And uh, we conducted the machine learning hyperparameters uh, tuning uh, with the process of five-fold cross-validation. So this technique involves uh, splitting data. Uh, one of the subsets serving as validation, uh, validation set and the remaining four subsets, they served as training set. And so this process was repeated five times and the hyperparameters were optimized to reverse the lowest uh, mean absolute error across the, all the five validation sets. So we were able to achieve the best predictions by combining, uh, by using the voting model approach that combines prediction from different machine learning models. So in the case of maximum pattern yield, the best results uh, 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 came from the model that combined the XGBoost and the forest support vector regression and kernel reach models. In the case of uh, uh, incident ion energies, the uh, best voting model combined three models, XGBoost, random forest, and support vector uh, regressor. So the model uh, weights here were op also optimized, optimized sorry, in the process of five-fold cross-validation. Uh, Yes, we, it was interesting for us to analyze the uh, how different descriptors influenced machine learning predictions. So here uh, uh, we can take a look at the five most important descriptors for the two most successful machine learning models, XGBoost and uh, Random Forest. So when it comes to the sputtering yield predictions, the XGBoost model relied predominantly on ion atomic number and to a lesser extent on the ion van der Waals radius and target density, the target van der Waals radius and the, uh, uh, the energy of representation of the target. So in the case of uh, random forest model, it uh, was affected mostly by the ion uh, descriptors like ion mass, ion atomic number, uh, the uh, under the radius of the ion and ion boiling and melting points. So, and uh, for the incident ion prediction, uh, the two models they relied rely to mostly uh, on the similar descriptors. So, let's take a look at actually how uh, the results uh, from our voting model. So, uh, we found in the validation sets, we found that the mean absolute error for sputtering yield prediction was 0 0.0712. And for the ion energy, it was 0 0.0382. And uh, we found that, uh, we observed that in test set, the errors were very similar. So this indicates that our uh, voting models that generalize way well to a new, to a new data. Uh, so here we can see also the distributions of the relative errors for the absolute values of sputtering yield and the incidence ion energy on the test data. So on the data that was not used for training. So our test set uh, included 41 uh, unique target material ion pairs. And you can see that, for example, for sputtering yield, uh, for most of the pairs, the relative errors were below some cases, the error was higher than that. And uh, well, in the case of uh, incident ion uh, energy prediction, you can we can see that the uh, relative error distributions are more favorable. So most of the errors they fall within ten percent. So these results are quite good. Uh, next, we decided to extend our model to more complex targets that uh, com that are composed of uh, arbitrary number of atoms. So for this, we collected some additional data, experimental data. Yes, so now our new data set included 284 single element target ion pairs and uh, 51 uh, target material ion pairs with target materials composed of uh, uh, multiple elements, let's say. So to accommodate for these uh, more complex targets, 
we updated our input descriptors. So uh, we used for target material, we used total atomic number, the average atomic number, the average atomic mass, the total atomic uh, molecular mass, uh, the number of atoms, and uh, to account for the elemental compositions, we introduced uh, descriptors that characterized it. In, uh, so they were in so this features represented the uh, count of atoms that belong to different blocks and groups of the periodic table. And additionally, we decided to use more uh, target uh, descriptors. So we added bulk modulus values, lattice volume, and lattice type uh, descriptors. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we found that for uh, both uh, spectrum yield and uh, in projectile iron, energy predictions, the most uh, uh, successful models combined predictions from these three models, the actually boost model, the random forest model, and kernel reach model. So here are the most uh, five most important uh, descriptors for uh, each one of these models. So overall, we can see that uh, now the machinery models, they rely more on the uh, target material descriptors uh, as compared to the uh, to when they were trained exclusively on the single element targets. So uh, in the case of actually boost model, uh, so now it relies predominantly on the ion atomic number, ion boiling point, and uh, target density again, uh, ion radius, and uh, also the uh, the uh, presence of the elements that belong to the group one B of the uh, periodic table in the target. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the random forest model uh, relies on uh, similar descriptors and interestingly kernel reach, it, uh, it depends a lot on the, uh, of, uh, of whether iron belongs to the group 1A of the periodic table and uh, it depends on uh, iron radiate, radiate target density again and the delta H formation. Uh, so yes, so the in the case of uh, the ion energy uh, the energy boost relies on the a lot again on the target material uh, uh, descriptors that are related to the actually target density or and the target mass and mass uh, mass per atom and uh, also on the uh, radius of ion uh, of the projectile ion uh, yes so Actually, the uh, kernel relation random forest regressor, they use similar prediction. They rely on similar predictions as in the case of uh, spatron yield predict, or uh, as, as similar descriptors in the, in, in the case of spatron yield predictions. So, uh, yeah, so now we can, let's compare how different machine learning models uh, performed on test data. Uh, we can compare the, mo the models that were tested uh, exclusively on the single, uh, element targets and uh, the models that were uh, trained on our new data set that included multi-element targets. So for uh, individual models like Sekji Boost, Random Forest, and Kernel Reach, the, uh, they performed actually better when they were trained and tested on multi-element targets than uh, when they were t uh, trained on single element targets. But uh, the performance of voting regressor for this data set decreased in comparison to the uh, voting regressor uh, trained on uh, on the single ML targets. But and in the case of the uh, prediction of the incident ion energy, all the models performed slightly worse uh, when they were trained and tested on the multi-element targets and the mixed element targets, let's say, as compared to the uh, case when they were uh, trained and uh, tested on single element targets. But in despite this, in all uh, all the cases, the voting regressors, they, were, they performed consistently better than uh, all the individual models. And this demonstrates that, like demonstrate the strengths of this voting model approach that combines Yeah, so yeah, the, the, here we can uh, analyze the mm, distributions of mean absolute errors on the test data uh, for the voting models. So the uh, our test data included now 51 unique target uh, material ion pairs with eight uh, in the in 
eight uh, instances uh, target materials were, was, were composed of more than one atom and uh, oh, sorry more than one element let's say and uh, we can see that uh, the errors for uh, these multi-elemental targets they were consistent with their for most for, for most of the cases they were consistent with the errors for found for uh, single element targets and only in, in two uh, instances they were uh, overestimated here so and the same was observed for the incident ion energy uh, so the errors were for the multi-elemental targets they were mostly consistent with errors for uh, single element targets so uh, yes yeah, so the, the model that was, was trained for uh, the targets with our arbitrary number of uh, composed of num arbitrary number of elements generalizes well to new data too uh, Yes, so here are the conclusions of these uh, projects. Uh, so, yeah, machine learning provides a cost effective and efficient alternative to traditional experiment and simulations. And we demonstrated that our machine learning based approach can deliver accurate predictions uh, using just readily available uh, physical and chemical input data and can handle uh, both single element and multi element targets. Thank you for your attention.